comprehensive performance by the Indian team, a 200 runs win that seals the series 2-1 in their favour after a bit of a scare in the second ODI. Normancy resumes with the third ODI and to talk about it, we have Nikhil and Somesh. Well, Nikhil, as close to a complete team performance as it gets. Yeah, I think a uh, good one to have as well. Uh, we talked about having a good surface. I don't think it was that good a surface to play on. Uh, I think Indian batters just applied themselves better. And I think it did get slower. But uh, we wanted two people to get runs. Both of them got them. Uh, Hardik did as well. And so did Gil. Uh, so happy for them. And again, Shadul Thakur is just nailing his spot all by himself mm -hmm. here that you cannot take him for granted. You may not be able to find out why he's taking so many wickets, but he's taking them. So that's all matters. Golden arms. You know, there's that sort of uh, mystery around it. But then let's proceed chronologically. Let's talk about India's batting, barring that number three position, which for whatever reason, whoever has occupied that, it hasn't worked out for India in the series. But Tomesh, overall, almost every battle chipped in with runs. See, the number three position is occupied, already occupied or taken by one of the best number three batters of all time, if not the best. So, I mean, that's no no cause for concern. Apart from that, I mean, whatever positives India had to achieve from this game, they've already done it. Uh, Ishan Kishan as an opener is logged uh, for the World Cup, at least as a reserve opener. Uh, it will be very harsh on him if he is not in the eleven, which he might not be. Gill scored runs and like we said, like we discussed, he, he played spin well uh, as well today. Although he did lose his wicket to uh, Gudakesh Moti, but then he encountered him pretty decently. Samson getting runs. The best part about him was him taking down the spinner. He scored, yeah. what, 28 runs of 10 balls against Yannick Karaya, which was sort of a momentum shifter. And then, I mean, to add the cherry on top... Uh, Hardik Pandya got runs in the way he usually gets. And uh, although West Indies did uh, sort of feed him balls in the areas that he likes to hit, but then at the end of the day, I mean, every batter on his day uh, would want to capitalize on the opportunities that they get. And these are the games where you sort of push your numbers up and Hardik really did that. So all in all, a complete performance. Hmm. Three consecutive half centuries in the series. Of course, I'm talking about Tishan Kishan. Is he now, with these performances, asking for more than just a reserve spot? Nikhil, Somesh did allude to it, but your thoughts? No, no, I don't think so. I think he's happy and I think he will be happy as well that he's got starts in almost every game that he's played uh, so far. So, which is great for him, as Som said and we discussed. You want people ready and in form. That's what Kishan has, Ishan has shown. Uh, the only... Disclaimer I'll still put is, please don't make him bat in the middle order all of a sudden. So, if at all there is any semblance of doubt, then try him out in the lower order. If at all you want to. Otherwise, no. Good, a happy reserve opener who's scoring runs, great. Samson scoring runs at the pace. That is, I think, exactly what India have been wanting Sky to do. And for Sanju to do it uh, in the manner that he did at the position that he came in in that uh, innings, I think uh, very good signs. I don't know or I don't think he'll get enough games in this format now going ahead. But uh, very good show to at least be in the reckoning. We'll come back to Sanju. But now we are not sure about KL and uh, Iyer's injury status and their recovery before the Asia Cup. Now, Somesh, would you think India would be tempted to do what Nikhil is cautioning them against? That is Ishan Kishan in form occupying the middle order slot, any of the middle order slots? Uh, I see the point is now, this is uh, this is something that we talked about uh, ahead of the game as well. Now that Sanju has scored runs, hmm. you sort of already have, an, uh, have a player who, uh, for whom that's a natural position. So even if you look at Asia Cup, when Rohit and Kohli would be back, you'd rather want to have Sanju in the middle order, uh, which is a natural position for him, uh, rather than trying... Uh, random things out. Again, the issue is having six righties in the top six. Yeah. Uh, yeah, six righties in the top six is a very weird way to frame it because it's sort of obvious. But yeah, so that's the only challenge. Maybe, I mean, I don't know. Uh, uh, they, they can have uh, Jadeja uh, as a floater at five at times. 
that's an option they can try and use Hardik more as a finisher. But apart from that, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure with India play Pakistan, Rohit and Kohli would be there. Gil, Gil would be there in the uh, uh, as an opener. So I would rather have Sanju if Kale is not available in, in the in the top four. Mm. Sagar talks about Hardik Pandya and is elated with the fact that he finally has some runs under his belt. Now, Nikhil, Hardik Pandya proceeded about his innings the way he's known to score runs in the last few years. He took his time, got his eye in and then unleashed those big strokes. Yeah, and I think that is probably the only thing that you can nitpick in the entire innings that uh, in the first 33 balls, he was just 28 runs. And I also believe that slowdown or that period where Sanju came into bat, hit those runs, and then Hardik took time, Gil was at the non striker end for far too long. So that actually also at times did not help Gil, maybe in terms of getting into that rhythm, but that's just part and parcel of the game. So uh, sometimes you feel that with Hardik, that he's decided that I'm going to bat this way. Sometimes you'll want the person, something that we discuss in the T20 format, that you'll want to be an accelerating guy. So... While his 28 of 33 did not cost India a lot, again, we are very, very nitpicking here in terms of kya or better kar sakte the. So in Maybe that sense, uh, it's only in the, like when you are facing stronger teams, that's when you'll want to stay ahead and which I'm sure Hardik will do. So uh, he, he took his time, but his last 19 balls got India for two runs. So yeah. good for him also to get among the runs because he hasn't, hadn't got that. So uh, happy for him also scoring and he bowled with the new ball again, which is, again, something that we expect him to yeah. do now. Mm. Vikram also so, looked, yeah, so much. Yeah, I, I just have a hypothetical scenario to discuss with uh, Nikhil and Mega you here. So, let's say if in the Asia Cup, like I said, Rohit and Gil is there to open, Kohli is there at three. You have Hardik at somewhere in the top five. So, would... Wouldn't it be better for India to sort of not play Sky in the Asia Cup and play both Samson and Kishan in the middle order and have it as a shootout, you know, of sorts? Because anyway, when KL and uh, Shreya Sayyar are back, there would just be room for one more player in the reserve as a middle order. So you anyway, when you make the squad for the World Cup, you'll have to choose between Samson and Sky because Kishan would be definitely there as a reserve opener. So... I mean, just a food for thought. I think it's it's an interesting one, but I just don't see them trying out that for two spots. So I don't see them trying. No, no, so basically, ultimately, only one of them will be there in the World Cup, you know, middle order. But who would be there can be a sort of a shootout, assuming KL is not fit. Yeah, I think I get your gist, but as I, as I said, I'll hope that, and as you also alluded some time back, that let Kishan be the guy was opening and mm -hmm. play Samson. If you don't mm -hmm. want to play Kishan down, just play Samson. It's okay. We, You can't fix, uh, like you can't have a lefty guy just because for yeah. the sake of it. So uh, in that case, I'll prefer them playing Samson as their uh, keeper. So that mm -hmm. it, then it also gives them a good enough games for Sanju also to be there and do it in that role. So mm -hmm. suppose KL doesn't get fit. Then you have mm -hmm. Samson who's ready for that job. So yeah. I think in that sense, I don't mind Sky getting out of this setup for now because as much as he can do, I think you can only push people so much. And mm -hmm. given whatever chances they've got, Sanju in two games, I feel Sanju is done better than Sky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think inevitably if if Kishan is an opener, he won't feature when both Rohit and Gil are there. You would have uh, Sky and Samson in the 11 if Ayer and KL are not there because ultimately there will be spots up for grabs. So in that case, what I want is, again, just to get it out, I'll want them to play Aksar. So then you can push Hardik at 5, you hmm. can have Sanju, and then you have Jadeja and Aksar, which is good enough batting till number 7 and number 8 you have Shadu, which is fine. You still have yeah. batting nature. Hmm. So I think that will actually give them a lot of options with ball as well. Hmm. So uh, again, I don't think it is like to happen. Uh, we hmm. know that, but yeah. Yeah. All right, so we've got some comments in the meanwhile. Sports fan, uh, obviously extending the conversation that we were just having and uh, the positions that are up for grabs and what could be the potential candidates for those positions. Sports fan uh, as, is asking, how do you think uh, Sky's knock at number six? How do you look at it? And uh, 
uh, the management, how it is looking at Sky in the future. And uh, one sign that we got uh, based on his batting position today was that the team wants to use him as a finisher because of his ability to explode, because of his ability to score those quick fire runs and uh, uh, leave an imprint on the game. So again, Nikhil, do you see that slot still there for him? See, I think it is something where, you know, uh, like every management has this thing that we want to make this guy succeed. And which is fair on the management to have a punt that, you know, we will ensure that this happens. Today also you saw, you saw Hardik coming out where I felt they could have sent Surya, but then you could get a zish that, okay, the plan is to have him only in the last 50. That yeah. you get in while there is an extra fielder inside the circle and then you use that period and then you get set. So mm. you're trying to get a person into form. And I think it's also a bit about confidence. I think had had Surya had enough games in terms of prior to this in that position and scored a lot of runs, I'm sure he would have played far more differently. But given that he hasn't had the success versus tougher opponents in this format, it just shows in terms of how he starts as well. So uh, very keen to see, as Soam said, if those two are not playing, if they continue with Sky at 6, fair play to the management, I'll just hope he gets that rhythm and confidence back because there are some players for whom the confidence matters far more. So hmm. with Surya, hopefully he gets that confidence back because then in the last 10 overs, if you want somebody to bat freely and use the field, yes, Surya definitely fits the bill. But you'll want him to score consistently and get that confidence also. Mm. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, one more thing which is worth exploring is how Samson, uh, sorry, how Sky bats a six when India are chasing. Because last two games, India were setting a target. Because, I mean, he's a, he's a kind of a player who has all the shots. But when he knows that there is a target, his style of play would vary. And I'm not saying that that's the ideal way to look at a player. I mean, because a, a a good player should be able to perform both in the first and the second innings. But I'm saying in terms of him understanding the tempo required for ODI cricket, maybe it will be better for him to have, get a couple of games where he's sort of chasing a target, batting at six. Hmm. Interesting. We'd get back to that. Again, some comments. The Hogger bloggers is remarking that uh, who do we think are the players who made the most out of the series and which players did not make the most of the opportunities presented to them. And apart from that, Vikram has been constantly uh, showing his concern whether the management would continue to experiment even once the big stage is there, once the World Cup is around the corner. But extending the Sky conversation uh, now, Somesh, of course, you mentioned about him understanding the tempo. But we saw before the IPL as well, when there was an ODI series against Australia, he was woefully out of the form. And that kind of, uh, that phase continued into the IPL. But then, once he got going, he was scoring those impactful runs. So, is it the format and is the management trying to create a scenario for him, wherein even in ODIs, he's being given that platform where it's more like T20 once he arrives at the crease than like the 50-over format? See, I think... Getting out first ball duck is not a you know, measure yeah. of form, to be very honest. I mean, if he would have been out uh, 8 of 20 balls in 3 games, then we probably could have said that he's out of form. But anyone can get out first ball, especially if a baller of caliber Mitchell, of Mitchell Stark is bowling. So, uh, he would have learned his lessons, not getting too far across, which I think he did in the T20s as well. But that's how he plays. He always wants to play his favourite shot. Scoop, it might or not always work. And that's the learnings that he'll take forward. But apart from that, I mean, the question uh, of which players have done well and which players have not sort of capitalized on this series, I think uh, a player that we already discussed in the preview is Umran Malik. Uh, I, I, I think I can comfortably say now that he has walked himself out of the World Cup squad. Uh, of course, there's a huge career in front of him. But at the moment, I think uh, it, unless and until there are multiple injuries and uh, I mean, India's hope for the World Cup just diminish. That's the only way I feel Umran Malik would be in the squad. Apart from that, I don't see that happening. Players who have done well, of course, Kishan, I mean, he's, he's, he's done well in every game. So, he's sort yeah. of a lock, at least from a squad perspective. Uh, apart from that, uh, Samson today, good knock. Hardik coming back to form. I think Shardul did really well in this series. So... That's a positive because India ideally would want him at eight, so that their mm-hmm. batting lineup is lengthened. One player who has just cemented his spot is Kuldeep Yadav because yeah. I think West Indies players had no idea how to play him. To be very mm-hmm. honest, I mean he looked like getting a wicket in almost every ball. 
so that's the class of the uh, player and i think uh, when it comes to playing uh, you no know, crucial games against australia and england there will be a lot of players who, who won't be as comfortable playing a uh, kuldeep yadav who is in the best rhythm so he would be very very important and he's shown that form throughout this year particularly in this format so it's not just this series but uh, he has had fair good performances earlier as well nikhil your thoughts on kuldeep yadav how would you summarize his performances yeah i think he's been uh, very great and something we talked about in the in the previous watch along as well in the previous show as well that how he's found ways to have add more to his armory yes i don't you will you will say that okay you are playing west indies or not doing well not playing spill well but otherwise also he's been part of the setup for enough time and taking continuous wickets whenever they want him to so uh, in that regards i'll probably be slightly worried i don't i don't know if i should be worried but you think chehl will start feeling a bit fidgety about his spot in the 15 given the number of wickets shardul is also taking so mm. then it doesn't leave enough room to have uh, chehl also in that 15 so come the asia cup very keen to see the setup if at all there are any further experiments or they just play the right the 11 that they feel should be played in the world cup so uh, i think kuldeep has definitely done that better in terms of sealing that spot so as shardul mukesh kumar was very good today uh, yeah. because he was the one who started the rut for west indies using the uh, new ball very well and as sports fan also points it out that uh i don't know if he will be a backup just as of now but whatever chances he got he's done decently well mm-hmm. so you already have shami siraj and bumrah hopefully fit enough in that world cup yeah. squad so yeah. what uh, what might end up happening is maybe uh, umran malik and mukesh kumar get interchanged in the asian games squad because right now yeah. mukesh kumar is in that squad so that puts him out of the world cup contention but umran malik is not in that squad so we yeah, are you never know Well, Nikhil is also itching to get started with the watch alongs. Nikhil, not too far away, just a day away from it, because of course with the T20Is we'd be doing the watch alongs. But again, zeroing zeroing in on Mukesh's performance today in particular. Not somebody who has a lot of pace for sure, but the amount of bounce that he's able to extract and early on, unlike the West Indies pacers who didn't get a lot of movement, Mukesh got the ball to move both ways. So, Mesh. Yeah, true. well by the way yeah i mean see mukesh is a uh, i mean it's a very uh, i i don't know what the correct adjective to put it right now but he is being seen in a very favorable light by this management because he's been pushed yeah. in all three formats yeah. and with not real data behind it i mean i understand him being pushed in red ball cricket but he's not been a uh, no he has not played a lot of district cricket to be honest and his ipl I mean, he was on our impact scores. He was one of the worst performing paces. But I mean, he's done well with the opportunity that he has received. And the good thing about him is he's the, he's the hit the deck bowler which India has been struggling to find. I mean, India wanted Avish Khan to be that bowler. India wanted ideally they would have wanted a very fit Mosin Khan, the the, the Mosin Khan of 2022. It's not happening. Prasid Krishna is unfit. So I mean, there there are there aren't a lot of hit the deck bowlers, but Mukesh is. one of that so in the longer run i think he is going to be you know around the team more often than not talking about longer run now jaydev unadkat last played in odi back in 2013 it is 2023 again got an odi cap uh, nikhil you are smiling were you impressed with this performance today yeah i think you you feel good for people who have toiled long and hard in the setup and uh, they get a chance to come back and i think he bowled well in the test didn't quite have the luck to just get those edges because he kept beating the bat very often but uh, in the odi again he got one wicket again very typical of him to get it you know angling across got getting the edge good bounce lift as well so uh, happy for him that he got a chance because he's been around the team as well he took a lot of wickets as well in the vijay hazare as well so there was a reason for then them to pick him out of the blue if like i don't think many people saw it happening so uh, again it's like you know now you have enough options but again i don't think jaydev might make it to the uh, to the world cup squad so it'll probably remain the three of sami siraj bumrah and then you have maybe mukesh 
staying back as a potential reserve for you in that in the pace department and also i'm actually hoping that they keep mukesh more for the tests and fresh because that is where i feel he'll be far 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 more useful in south africa because that's what india missed the last time they played there well the emphasis certainly makes no. your point pretty clear vikram has been constantly asking what are our takeaways from the series and bits and pieces we've already covered it of course we'd uh, get our panelists to summarize it towards the end of the show deepak has a point not picking left handers and thinking we can win this world cup is completely foolish now so much i can't wait for so much to print this on a t-shirt some day because it is something that he's been talking about since a long time i mean i mean the point is i mean why do we have to wake up to this fact two months before the world cup i mean we have, we have known this for four years now i mean there was a lot of time where a lot of lefties could have been bled in i mean truth be told tilak verma right now at least in terms of capability is as good as any player that india might take to the world cup so i mean just because he's young doesn't mean that he's not ready so he could have been bled in and like we've discussed aksar the batter can be utilized much better uh, the point is people would always say ki rishabh pant ki injury you know uh, affected the team but let's not forget rishabh pant was out of the odi setup yeah even before he was injured so this was a problem that was there for a while and nothing really was done to sort it out so i mean at the last moment i mean there's no point talking about it this when they talk about process this has to be a part of the process as well i think rohit sharma finally has realized and even for the west indies series he said that we were missing a left hander in the top order so four years too late but at least there i durust hai so maybe let's see i mean uh i i wrote a preview of this series uh, looking at the world cup lens and i feel no matter if even if everyone is fit india would find it very i mean it's impossible for india to field an ideal 11 because if if they play their best 11 your three fast bowlers would be bumrah shami siraj and your spinner would be guldeep that means your batting just stops at 7 so that means you are having a long tail and if you're playing your top best six batters then rohit is opening with gill kohli at 4 ayer at 5 kl at uh, ayer at 4 kohli at 3 uh, who else is the kl at 5 Hard they get six, so that means these are your best six batters in the country in the format. But then all of them are ITs, so there is no way India can solve the issues that they are there with their best side. So I mean that is just I mean the point is the process itself was flawed to be honest, and nothing was really done to uh, sort it. Uh, having said that, they they're also hampered by the resources. I mean even if you look at country wide, there is hardly any fast bowler who can bat. i mean the best option is shardul thakur so inevitably even if he is not your prime gun pacer you are pushed to give him more chances because you know that he is the only uh, decent number 8 you have at least a number 8 who can bowl pace if you want number 8 to be a spinner then you have plethora of options you can play aksar you can play krunal you can play washington sundar there are so many but the point is in this day and age unless until you are playing on rank turners you you can't risk having just two front line pacers you need three pacers so yeah i mean it's just a sort of you know uh, a flaw in a process and also hampered by the availability of resources so it's a combination of both you know you talked about the ideal 11 now of course expect a lot of hue and cry on the social media after every toss in a game featuring india because again there are so many permutation combinations that exist for that 11 but nikhil what we were talking about in terms of the left handers now do you think india could have force fit a left hander uh, somesh has a point about tilak verma uh, him being young not shouldn't have been uh, a hindrance to his inclusion in the 15 but who are the potential prospects that you think india should have tried up tried out in the build up so i think in terms of i don't think it's worth dwelling into who could have been tried now because i think they tried sundar in the bangladesh odis uh, but i think there was fitness concerns because then he got injured and then was out of the setup so uh, again the, these things are not out in the open for us to also know how much fit a player is when sometimes you feel that they are fit but they are actually not fit at times mm. to bowl that much so uh, sunta they tried him for a reason there uh, i think even now they have the option of using aksar which is why i was happy to see them 
play him at four, and which is why I keep saying that if you don't want to play Sherez and Kale, which will be unfair on both of them, uh, yeah. if you don't play them together. But a year, I mean, there is no option of not playing a year. I mean, who's going to exactly. face him then? Yeah, and the thing is, Kale also has come in and yeah. in the, and at, at five is kind of been that guy who we've been searching for since a long time. That yeah. okay, now we finally hide the guy. Then you have her, you have Hardik at six. So you are left with no option but to then have these three and then you can't break them up just suddenly. So uh, to the counter of force fitting a left-hander, sometimes you just can't do it. There is mm-hmm. no other way. If Shreyas is performing, if if Kale is performing, if Hardik is performing, where is the spot to force fit the left-hander? So uh, had Rishapan been there, then definitely he would have been part of the setup uh, because he was he hit that turn in England and then you felt that, okay, Finally, yeah. India seemed to have solved that problem, but uh, I think they did try Sundar, but uh, wasn't to be. Now, let's just let the bygones be bygones and hope that how Chennai have won without leg spinners in the IPL. Uh, maybe India can win without a left hander yeah. in the top. I mean, six. the point is, as far as far as being prepared goes, uh, especially on wickets uh, like the, uh, India playing Australia and Chennai and. England and Lucknow, if, if venues are not changed, and which they will be because two two months to go in the World Cup, and we don't even know the venues as of now. But on these venues, what India might try is uh, promoting Jadeja. It might not work, but it it sort of uh, will uh, not challenge the oppositions in terms of them trying their different bowling options. Also, just sorry to say this like hit them randomly, but can you then? Possibly not play Hardik and play Aksar. Actually, this is. I mean, I mean the point is, we we. Uh, this is what we spoke in the preview as well. I mean, you can't yeah. just keep picking Hardik on a reputation. You have to be clever. So maybe what they can possibly do is play Hardik, but don't not do not play Shardul Thakur. Play Aksar in place of Shardul Thakur. That that, that number, then... yeah, that number eight spot actually has to sort of, you know. Have to be decided between three players: Shardul, Aksar, or Shami. Because if Bumrah is fit, he plays. If Siraj is fit, he's the number one ODI bowler. He plays. So your number eight has to be either Shami when you feel that oh, it's a England sort of a batting lineup where you need your quality bowlers, mm-hmm. or can be. I mean, obviously horses for courses where you need that oh, there's a quality bowling lineup. Maybe against Pakistan, you need a deeper batting lineup. So that's when you'd probably need a Aksar at eight, who can be used as a Floater uh, against the leggy and the left arm spinner. Both of them, uh, Pakistan would have both both the options in their eleven. Shadab and I mean, so many other left arm spinners that <laughs> they can field in. Especially, I, I guess Bangladesh as well. There's a potential yeah. to play outside it. While against other teams which do not have so many spin options, they can have Shardul at it. Yeah. And against teams with you know very heavy batting lineup, like I said, they can play Shami at it. So, so we should yeah. mention that floater. We might come across it pretty frequently during the World Cup mm-hmm. because with this management, we've seen that propensity to kind of promote players like Jadeja and Akshar across formats. Beat Bangladesh series last year during the test test match, the second test, wherein Akshar eventually played a match winning uh, innings as well. And then before that, in the Asia Cup early on, Jadeja was promoted. So considering the dearth of left-handed batting options that we have we might see the two names that we've been discussing about promoted frequently, Nikhil. Yeah, yeah, and it is, it is how it has to be. Uh, you know, a lot of people will get surprised that, can you think of drop, dropping Hardik, but this was the first good knock that is played in a while. So, yeah. uh, and it is it is what it is. I, I don't think it's like a, uh, it's like a thing that you can't always, you know, not pick or pick somebody. So you have to go with what you're facing, as Soum rightly pointed out. You go by opposition, you go by venues, and then you see what is the best combination fit. Just back that. If the, if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, it's fine. I don't think there is a place in the World Cup that you can think that should I should I should I fear not trying. I think you yes. should uh, you should go for horses for horses and then just see where it takes you. And despite the fact, I mean, knowing the fact that it might invite a lot of uproar on the social media, uproar in the media. 
uh, but again it is important to back what the management thinks is right and that was evident today as well because uh, the team resting the two superstars rohit sharma and virat kohli it did invite a lot of criticism but the team was pretty clear that this is what they wanted to do and they did it in the second uh, and third odi as well so me yeah absolutely i mean uh, that that was good to see that they were not really bothered about the result which i mean to be fair uh, today was the actual uh, representation of the difference between the two sides so india should not have lost the second odi as well despite them not playing both kohli and uh, rohit but it happens uh, at the end of the day india did well today and good that they stuck to their guns so that's the only positive i mean talking about promotions uh, i mean this is where it, it 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 gets a little complicated right if you remember a while back before jadeja was injured for the t20 world cup even he was pro- promoted in a few t20 yeah. games yeah and uh, the same management came out and say, said that they they would they want to try this out but i mean this was an ideal series to do it again if if you feel that maybe jadeja can be used as a floater why not do it in this series where you really don't have anything to lose maybe also because there were so many batters who were out of form uh, just to represent another perspective probably you needed everybody to get some game time Although- yeah but i mean you can't lose sight of the bigger picture right i mean it's not about individuals the point is you have to decide i mean is this is the sport about individual or is the sport about gaining glory as a team you can't sail in both boats ultimately it's a team sport but also sanjay makes an interesting point that we are talking about left handers as floaters sanjay says jadeja at number 4 solves all the problems all the problems interesting but uh, well nikhil at number 4 very specifically is pointed out the position as well yeah i think it is something that has been discussed in the past but as we've also talked jadeja is probably better equipped at handling pace and whatever is thrown at, thrown at him as compared to aksar who is a better player of spin in terms of hitting spin so uh, that's where whatever the problem lies lies and which is why you we are discussing all of this and uh, as som said all these things should be tried a year ago that you try this combination at four you try this pair in this spot what i sometimes feel is also not helping maybe in the bigger picture is the continuous sequence of icc events that you have a t20 world cup then you have wtc then you have a world at uh, fifa world cup so i think the planning i don't know if it is but it feels very like let's look at the next tournament only and then we see where it goes so maybe that that is what is not helping in terms of resting and then trying the right people but after this world cup i'm sure there will be enough diver- diversification of people also going out of the system coming into the system in terms of new faces so let's see can't wait for the t20 as then hmm saas to lena which may considering how quickly the icc events have been uh, coming up uh, so maybe you wanted to make a point no no i mean i was just thinking that four is still a little too high i mean maybe five because if ayer is huh? there you you bat him at yeah. four yeah there's another question around rinku singh now of course too late to talk about him as a contender for the rinku floor. singh ko west indies ke against t20 i even he liya bhai matlab let's not i mean the point is i mean क्वेश्चन रेस करने की वो है ना ये दिस ये तो बहुत दिस इज दिस कम्स मच लेटर दैट व्हाई इज इन रिक्रूसिंग पार्ट ऑफ द ओडीआई सेटअप व्हिच इज आई मीन यू कैन हैव आर्ग्युमेंट्स ऑन बोथ साइड्स देयर बोथ वुड बी गुड आर्ग्युमेंट्स बट द पॉइंट इज ही इज नॉट इवन इन द टी20 स्कीम ऑफ थिंग्स एट लीस्ट अगेंस्ट अ बेटर टीम ही इज देयर इन द आइलैंड स्क्वाड बट ही इज नॉट देयर इन द वेस्ट इंडीज स्क्वाड सो आई मीन लेट्स नॉट इवन गो देयर हम्म dukti nas pe haath rakh diya wala scenario i mean how animated so me was i think in, the, in this country there's no point being a finisher that's the only reason why everyone wants to you know bat as an yeah. opener or in the top 3 in ipl because at the end of the day everyone would just sort by most runs and select the squad no one mm-hmm. would bother to look at who has scored runs in what position in what role etc etc although surikumar yadav might just prove to be the aberration to that rule because he did thrive as an opener as well but uh, it's the run scored as finisher that eventually got him the recognition that he did get but uh, anyway it has been uh, quite an interesting series just final quick takeaways from the odi series considering that we are not going to see a lot of odis after immediately after this uh, nikhil your thoughts 
Yeah, I think we've like definitely touched upon them in terms of the runs that people have yeah. scored. Uh, the only and the biggest thing that I'm now looking forward to from this is how does Gill build on this? How does Kishan build on this if he gets a chance? Uh, the return of KL and Shreyas again because there is a lot of ambiguity around the fitness mm-hmm. and when will they come back and all of that. Hopefully they come back because otherwise the people who have been part of the system they have been doing well. But you will have a lot of people come in. At least six people will come into this setup. So I don't think you can judge entirely on how these players have done because eventually the combination has to work as a whole. So mm-hmm. Sami Siraj Bumrah coming back, Rohit Virat part of the setup. Uh, a lot of things will change. Hopefully a very good Asia Cup to begin with first. Mm. Just a moment to reflect on how tricky things are when it comes to the middle order. Because, of course, if Ayer and KL are fit, they are so short entry into the 11, beat Asia Cup, beat the World Cup. But the amount of ambiguity that surrounds their fitness, whether they would be available for the Asia Cup or not, one. Second, whether they'd be available for the main event, the World Cup or not. And Asia Cup in itself also is important. So, uh, to deal with that sort of ambiguity, I mean, it has been tricky for sure. Yeah, absolutely, and that's the uh, that's the reason we are having all this conversation, right? So that ambiguity will still remain till the time everything is finalized. But I think, uh, I mean, uh, by the time of the Asia Cup, we'd know if if certain players okay. are not fit by then. Then maybe, I mean, that then it becomes trickier. Actually, hmm. then let's say if someone is not fit for the Asia Cup, but they they might still be fit by the time of the World Cup. Yeah. You still pick them with no game hmm. time. Yeah. Uh, till that period of time. So I think when we come to the Asia Cup, we'd obviously be having all these discussions again. And that would be a better juncture for us to actually talk about how India's squad for the World Cup shape, is shaping up. As of now, the T20 series beckons. And uh, of course, we can look at it as a sort of mini advance audition for the World Cup, T20 World Cup, because remember that as well is scheduled for next year. And, and in the same uh, of course, uh, in the same country. So, uh, there's so much to look forward to as far as the T20I series is concerned as well. And uh, so much to look back upon, reflect upon as far as the ODI series is concerned too. So, we'll be back again with watch-alongs uh, like Nikhil has been looking forward to. And as of now, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for all your comments and this video. Once it's uh, up, you can also share your comments in the comment section and uh, we make sure that all of those comments are responded to. As of now, thanks for joining. Cheers.